So, I know when collision occurs, I know where collision occurs. Now let me just read the wording of this question for you so that you can see what you're going to have to do. Find, correct to the nearest degree, the obtuse angle between the directions of motion of the particles at the instant they collide. Okay, so, you can see? They're going to come together. Now, I don't know much about the actual directions of things because remember, at the very beginning of the question, they just gave us these, right? They just handed us these equations of displacement. So I don't know anything about the velocity equations at the moment. At the moment, okay? How do I work that out? Where do I go if I want to know the velocities? Differentiate. Yeah, I'm going to have to differentiate. So usually we would have started from acceleration and integrated up to here. But being that this is my starting point, I'm going to differentiate these. Can you get a head start on me? Can you work that out while I rub some space off? Sorry, did you need that? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I, I'll show you my. I've got it all written. It's fine. So I'm working on velocity now. Maybe I might as well pick up where we are. Um, you can see here, right? What have I done? This is, I'm just working on the first particle, okay? Now this is a general statement for any velocity, any angle of projection, but for the first particle, I've got a particular velocity, a particular angle of projection, and I've been given both of these prior, right? So I think what you've got is from the first part here, 40, is it 40 or is it 30? Let's see here. No, it's 30, the first one is 30. And I believe this is the angle that you will find. Yes? Do you remember this? So remembering just like we did before in this right angle triangle, what's going on, this is going to be 30 times it's the other two sides, so it's it's three fifths, which of course is. So I have a horizontal velocity for this, okay? That's fine. So I'm going off in this direction, okay? I need to know what's happening vertically as well. If you want some angles, you need your horizontal and your vertical. So therefore I'm going to say. Um, y dot over here, so I'm just going to try and condense as much as I can. Minus gt. I know what gravity is. I'm just defining that to be 10 today, so minus 40. Plus, okay, what are the other pieces? What are you going to get? This is sine of that sine inverse, right? We did this really, really early. What does this represent? Because this is the same. This is the same. This is gravity. This is the longer you've been flying, the more it's pulling you down, right? And eventually it's going to overcome whatever this happened to be, okay? Let's work it out. When you've got minus 40 plus 30 times 4 fifths, 30 times 4 fifths is? 24. Mm -hmm. So, what's happened? Be careful, sign and direction really matters here, right? So in other words, enough time has progressed, enough time has progressed here that the gravity is pulled down on this, and this object is now coming on, it's back on the down, right? So now I can kind of finish out part of this diagram. This is where it began, but I've actually gone further now. Right? So it's something a little bit like this, okay? So now I know that's how far I've gone into the motion, right? In the same way now I can do this for the second particle. I'm just gonna save some time because you're gonna rehearse everything here, but you're gonna do it for V2, V2, all that kind of thing. When time equals 4, x dot is e going to be equal to. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. I've got a negative here, once you work it out. Why do I have a negative? 
Because it's it's going in the opposite direction, isn't it? It started from the right, it's going to the left. Okay? So my horizontal displacement is going to be negative, right, toward the origin. When you have a look at y dot, if you go ahead and get your numbers, this happens to also be minus 16. Okay? That's somewhat coincidental. So when I complete out my diagram, it's gonna look like this. Here we go, and there's my point of collision there. Okay? Now, what was the question asking? Do you remember? It was looking for an obtuse angle. Very good. So it's going to be this angle here. Now, at this point, the usefulness of this diagram has ended. Okay? It's nice. It shows us what's roughly going on, but it won't help me calculate things. Okay? And do you remember, um, in some of your early questions, you would have drawn your box to show, okay, there's my angle of projection. And in the same way, you can draw a box to show your angle of impact. You would have had something like that. Okay? But here, two particles are interacting with each other. Yeah, two particles. So in fact, I'm not just getting this, I'm having, having something coming from the opposite side as well. So conveniently, because they both have the same vertical component here, so this is actually y1, and this is all 2 Okay, I'm going to draw myself a new diagram. It's going to look like this. Okay, now, I've drawn this really, really wide because I have to fit two particles into this thing. Okay, one's coming from the left, one's coming from the right. I've got some proportions here too. Yeah, which one is traveling faster toward the point of X2. impact? X2 is traveling faster, right? So therefore it's going, which is actually quite true. Uh, X2 is going that way, okay? And it's almost, it's almost double. Do you agree with that? It's almost double. So therefore I'm gonna put a dotted line in here. Okay, so ha, she got it, okay. So you can see I've got the first particle, going that way, and then I've got my second particle coming in from the opposite direction. Now it's a lot clearer what angle I'm actually trying to calculate. Okay? I've got my y dot, which is negative 16. Uh, it's the same thing over here, which like I said is a coincidence. And then I'm going to put some other numbers onto here, right? So let's put on x1 dot, which is 18, and I can put x2 dot as well. Remember, it's negative because it's heading in the other direction. Okay. So where's the angle I'm trying to work out? It's this one in this blue, red, black triangle, right? So I'm gonna give some names to these things. I'm gonna call that beta, and I'm gonna call this alpha. So can someone tell me, what kind of expression should I write to work out the total size of this angle? Alpha plus beta. Okay, so alpha plus beta, which is equal to, have a look at the information you've got, and what's going to be the best ratio in these right angled triangles to choose. Have a look carefully. For example, if you just think about alpha, you got this guy up here, and you got this length. That's the opposite and adjacent, right? Hence, 10. So I'm going to go to work out alpha. It's 10 inverse of opposite on adjacent. Yeah. Yeah. Opposite adjacent. Now, because what I'm trying to work out is the magnitude of an angle, I'm not going to worry about any negatives here. Okay. That's alpha, and then I need beta. So that's 10 inverse of what? It's opposite on the same adjacent, right? So this is, happens to be 2. Okay? So you can go ahead, you calculate or do this, I think you'll get like 111.8, blah, 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 blah. Does that seem like a reasonable answer? It does, right? Number one, we expect it to be a tiss. Number two, it's clearly in, in the range there, right? You remember, you expect this to be, I've tried my best. You know how we talk about like people, oh, do my, does my diagram have to be to scale? No, it doesn't, but you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't draw your diagrams to scale. Because then you have very little mechanism for working out, am I in the right ballpark or not? And my diagrams, not too bad. Okay? I think they ask for this to the nearest degree. And there's your angle. Okay? So, to rewind, right? where we began, because they were trying to be nice to us and realise how much work we had to do, they gave us these equations of displacement. We didn't have to integrate to get all the way there. Okay? But then we had to go through, through a series of loops to try and work out, okay, if they collide, which equations am I going to combine? How am I going to solve to find the particular numbers that I've got? And out pops an answer, which you need to physically interpret. Okay? 